And now, here's your host of Shaping Success, Wes Tankersley. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Shaping Success. I'm your host, Wes Tankersley. Today, we have the Millennial Money Mentor, Jose Hernandez, as a guest. Before we get to him, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about our new sponsor, Tattooed and Successful. That is what this episode is brought to you by. I really love their stuff. They have great information because they talk about you know, judging a book by a cover, I, I don't think you can really do that. Success isn't really dependent upon what you look like, how you sound or things like that. It's really based on what you do and what you deem that. So go over to tattooedandsuccessful.com and use code tank to get yourself a special discount at checkout. All right. Well, here we go. We're going to get to the interview. Jose, thank you for taking the time to be on Shaping Success. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Oh, we lost, we lost the audio. Are we, oh, I heard you there in there. Is it delayed again? There we go. We got gotcha. you. We got gotcha. you. Okay. Okay. Yep. Hey, thanks for taking the time to be on the show. You know, I reached out to you a couple of weeks ago. A, a friend of mine, you know, pointed me out to you and I just kind of love your story. I listened to a couple of podcast episodes yesterday and, and just kind of looking through your Instagram and stuff like that. Um, can you give everyone just a little short background? I know we're going to get to a lot of it, but uh, who you are and kind of what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So my name's Jose Hernandez, and I go by the Millennial Money Mentor on social media. On social media, I do my best to help people learn important concepts related to personal finance and investing and, and building wealth, especially for people that didn't have the opportunity to learn this stuff either when they grew up or in school. So doing my best to take what I learned in the professional financial services industry where I started my career and moved on from that and have been sharing basically everything I've learned as I've gone in, in the industry and also have an online financial education platform called Financial University, which is really designed to go above and beyond social media and, and help people uh, take the next step in their investing financial literacy journeys. Yeah, and it's interesting because I know that you come from a, a ap- athletic background. You were a baseball player, and I've I've interviewed a couple different guys on my show that are professional baseball, and we always get into the issue of financial literacy. Like they don't teach you how to manage your money in school, right? Right. Like in high school, and that's always an issue. Like even even non athletes, but especially when you're given so much money, when you get that big contract and you don't know what to do with the money, um, can you talk a little bit about how important that is and and the edu- lack of education that you get in that type of situation? Yeah, absolutely. So I can definitely relate to that. I have a couple of friends that are actually in the big leagues, and we've actually had these conversations about how really it's not something that the organizations truly help the players with. A lot of these guys end up getting financial advisors, which in a lot of cases is a smart step, especially if you don't know what you're doing. But in either case, whether you have an advisor or not, I think it's good to have at least a foundational understanding of the position that you're in when you have all that money all at once and how you can actually use it to continue to build wealth and protect it. And after your playing days are over, still have plenty of options available to you. And that's what I think a lot of these guys don't realize is they can't, they're not going to play forever, regardless of how talented they are. And uh, the game of baseball is a very tough one. And I think that the more that you can do to just hedge the risk of not playing as long as you didn't think you would, or not getting that seven year, uh, not being invested in that pension after you're with the, with the big leagues for long enough. uh, I think that's, that's incredibly important. And, you know, People blame school for for a good reason, I think, but at the same time, I don't think that, you know, just your average school teacher's in a position to really teach you these things. And uh, that's a big part of why, you know, I launched my own online educational platform is to fill that gap. But nonetheless, I think it definitely starts with a proper level of financial literacy, proper level of understanding of what money is and how to use it as a tool and how to make sure that it lasts also. Yeah. And so how do you, how, what are the age people, the age group that you work with? Is it, does it start really young? Um, you know, kind of talk about that demographic of the people that you work with. Yeah, of course. So when I first started my career as a financial advisor, I primarily worked with people that were either in retirement or approaching retirement. But of course I, I go by the millennial money mentor on social media. So I primarily focus now on the millennial generation, which is roughly call it 25 to 40. 
And it's really, uh, I think it's a really important time in someone's life because uh, you're no longer really a kid in high school, but you're also, you know, not so down the line to where you're out of time. So it's a really perfect time to really start not only learning these important subjects, but actually putting them to place and primarily help people that have worked hard to set themselves up for a successful career or they're successful business owners as well. And they're in a position now that they're making good money, but they don't necessarily know what to do with it. Yeah. And you know, I, I'm, I'll be, I'll be 41 this year and I will tell you right now that there is no, there's no, like, it's, it's funny how I make way more money now than I did, but I don't know what to do with it. Like it's, I take that money and I, and I, I put it in a bank. I, you know, I just recently started retirement. I had retirement at one of my previous jobs and you just, because you spend money the way that you do, you don't, you know, you just don't know. You're just not, I don't know. It is very, uh, literacy and money and spending and things like that is really tough. And people don't understand that when they get to that age, they're not going to have anything left if they don't put anything away now or yeah. invest it or do things like that. What's, what's one of your best, what, what do you try to bring to help people understand that, that they need to spend, they need to spend money to make money? Yeah. I think it's just understanding just like the light bulb moment is understanding that we're going to need money at some point in time that's going to replace your income, right? A lot of people our age are thinking about things like financial independence, retire early, but some people like what they do for a living. That's fine too. But there's going to come a point in time where uh, either you're not able to work anymore or you just want to move on from it and want to have options. And that's not going to happen unless you already have either outside sources of income or you've built up enough assets that you can use to leverage as, as, a, as a way to bring in income otherwise through your portfolio income. So just helping people understand that like, investing is really just a way to make sure that you build enough wealth to be able to achieve specific things that matter to you in the future. I think that's the number one thing that I learned as a financial advisor. It's not necessarily trying to beat the stock market or picking the best stocks. So those things are great, but understanding the big picture and the actual why behind it. And I think once people kind of buy into that, it's a completely different conversation because it's not just I'm you know, saving a portion of my paycheck. It's I'm consistently building enough wealth to be able to achieve the specific goal that that's meaningful to me and potentially even my family. And that gives you a much, much more conviction around what you're doing. And it makes it much more than just the stock markets. It's, it's completely a different conversation, I think. Yeah. And I personally, like my wife and I, we talk about this all the time. We're big. I, I've read, you know, Rich Ed Ford has <laughs> one of those books that you li- like, I think everyone should read just to understand how yeah. that works and how, you know, I think we were kind of told this, this lie. And if you read that book that you need to have an education in order to make money in order to be successful, I think that's one of the biggest things because everyone wants to go get a pension. Everyone wants to go retire. Everyone wants to go, you know, have money when it's, when it's over. But the fact of the matter is, is that if you don't make decisions where the money is making money for you instead of working for your money, like most people do, it kind of just pinholes you into just drawing a little bit more than what Social Security gives you because you have that retirement. Yeah, of course. And that's a good point. I mean, I think a lot of people need to realize that Social Security was put in place a really long time ago. And I'm not sure if it's going to completely go away, but uh, I think that relying only on the government to secure your future or even a pension because pensions are becoming much more rare these days. Basically, the employers are putting it on you to, to figure it out. So uh, the more that you can adopt the mindset that it's on you and essentially not to be dark, but no one's coming to save you, I think the better off that you are in the long run. Yep, exactly. So. What kind of things do you do with your classes to help people kind of understand what's going on? I know that you post videos on Instagram and things like that, but they can actually sign up for classes with you and you can teach them, correct? What do you do in those classes? Yeah, of course. And give me just one second. My dogs are making way too much noise. I'll be right back. Yep, you're good. Guys, relax. Come on. So, you're good. All right. So that's a good question. So within Financial University, we have a number of different programs depending on where you are in your financial literacy and investing journey. But we really help you understand the foundations of investing, right? It's like in, in anything in life, whether you want to become a pilot or anything that's significant and important, there's a base level of 
education and knowledge that you need, no matter what. So we start off with that, and then we help you understand how does the stock market work, how does risk work, why you need to take risk, why inflation is a big deal, and how to start getting ahead of it, uh, how to start paying yourself first, developing great financial habits, managing debt, if that's that's something that's on your, on your balance sheet right now, helping you understand what your financial goals are, and so on. And then we move on, help you understand how do you actually put together an investment portfolio, right? The, the vehicle that you use to get from point A, where you are right now, to point B, your future financial goals, that is your investment portfolio. And you want to make sure that you put that together according to a strategy that makes sense to, to you, your goals, how comfortable you are with risk personally, and so on. And then once you're in the more advanced stage, we help you understand how you can take your investing to the next level if you want to go above index funds and ETFs. Right, uh, that's, that's perfectly fine. There's more risks involved with those types of strategies, so we've saved that towards the end of our programs. But at the end of the day, we, we do our best to provide people really with the A to Z education on foundations of investing, how to get clear on what it is that you're actually trying to accomplish, how to come up with a plan to accomplish it, and how to be self-sufficient in how you actually manage your own money month to month, year, year to year, to increase the odds of, of making that financial future dream that you have a reality. Yeah. And I think it's interesting because I think one of the biggest things that I see, and I watch my parents struggle with this and I've struggled with it myself is I had retirements and I had things like that. And a lot of times people think that that's just there for kind of like a windfall. If something happens, I need to borrow from that, but they don't right. understand the fact that borrowing from that money in the end can be really damaging because you have nothing left. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Like, people don't understand growth and how, how it works. Like there's always, they're always looking at, Oh my gosh, I bought this for $50. Now it's worth $30 like a right. week later and I've lost money. It's that's not the reason behind investing. Absolutely. Yeah. I think one of the most important concepts that you can learn, not just in investing, but in life is opportunity costs. So it's basically what you're giving up because you went with one option over another. And in the case of investing, whether it's just waiting to get started or like you mentioned, drawing from your investment accounts early, the opportunity cost is potentially tens and not in some cases, hundreds of thousands of dollars in potential future compounding interest, because it's really just kind of like a snowball effect. That's how compounding works at the basic level. And the bigger that snowball gets, the more that you add to the investments, the more that you see growth in the markets, the, the larger and larger that snowball gets. But every time that you withdraw from your investment accounts too early, you're essentially kind of taking some snow out of that snowball. So of course, at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, you have a much smaller snowball, much smaller you know, nest egg that you can live off of compared to if you stayed the course, you were disciplined and had all the other areas of your life, financial life in place. So you didn't necessarily have to tap into your investments too early. So that's why your success in, in your finances is much more than just what the S&P 500 is doing. Yes, those things matter, but a true financial plan is A to Z, making sure that you have a true financial plan in place. You have systems in place that are always working for you and you're being proactive, not reactive when it comes to things coming up in your life. Yeah. It's, it's a tough, it's like a tough act to balance, right? Because you're always, there's so many things going on. The economy can crash, money can, yeah. you can lose money. But if you just weather the storm and wait, and then later on, it's going to pay off in the end. If you can just get through that part. Yeah. And it's understanding risk, right? A lot of people forget that there's risk involved in investing, especially recently where markets have basically gone straight up and there hasn't been a ton of, of, you know, drops ever since the, the last crash. Uh, it's always important to know how you're invested before you know what hits the fan. That way it doesn't throw you off guard and you want to be proactive with how much risk you're taking and say, be honest with yourself and say, if the market crashed 20 percent today, how, how much would that affect me? Not only in terms of my goals, but would that make me feel pressured to panic? So. So these are the types of questions you want to be asking yourself before. Uh, you know, things turn around because as human beings, we're so used to what's called recency bias, meaning we're just thinking about what's recently happened. And of course, if the markets have just been going up and social media is talking about how the stock market's never going to go down and so on, that sets you up to kind of expect the same thing to happen. And we know enough about the stock market now that's to see that it doesn't go straight up. It goes up over time, but there's risk involved. And if you're going to take risk, you need to have time on your side. Yep, exactly. So let's kind of pivot here because I, I, I love, I love that this kind of your baseball career kind of 
morphed into this and this is where you ended up after baseball. I want to talk a little bit about how you can relate what you're doing to baseball, because I think that in my mind as a coach and as a player, baseball taught me so many life lessons that I don't think people see. Can you talk about how you kind of transition from that and what you use from playing and, and, and what you did before in your current situation? Yeah, absolutely. This is something I try to do my best to talk to young athletes about. Um, so after my, my baseball career ended, I actually started in the wealth management industry as a financial advisor. And uh, from the from recruiting hiring process, I'll say that being a student athlete, having that on your resume makes you very, very attractive to, to firms because you already have a lot of qualities that they look for in, in successful individuals or potential candidates. So they like people that are competitive. They like people that are coachable. They like people that have work ethic that can make adjustments, people that can work on a team, right? These intangibles that you learn as an athlete, they actually definitely transit, uh, translate into the professional and, and the business world. So that helped me a ton get into the industry and really sell myself as, as why I'd be a good asset for the firm that I started my career with. And then of course, in the day to day, if you're involved in any kind of sales or building your own business or anything that is a bit of an uphill battle compared to just something that's not as difficult. There's going to be some tough days, just like in the game, right? You go through through periods where you're rolling, right? If you're if you're a, a position player, you know that you're going to go through periods where you're swinging the bat well. Things are going going your way. Uh, the you know the fly ball or you know the small little dinker is falling for you for a hit and so on. Right. And then mm -hmm. there's going to be times where you go through through a slump. And those are the times where you really have to, to dig deep and, and either make adjustments or, or be able to just realize that if you continue to put in the work, continue to, to be coachable, continue to put yourself in a position to be successful, that's going to eventually, things are eventually going to turn around for you. And I think that th that's really something I've been able to, to use ever since I transitioned from uh, the corporate world to, into building my own businesses. You know, it's, it's definitely an uphill battle. A lot of times and um, in business, especially in the early stages where you're having to put yourself out there and figure out whether or not certain things are going to work or not, you got to go up there with the expectation that things are going to go well. And then when they don't go well, you have to, to live with it, pick yourself back up and then make an adjustment and then go back up to the plate again. It's almost like, you know, you're going up to, to the to plate to face a new pitcher. Maybe that, you know, the guys is a great scouting report, high velo, good off speed stuff. But of course, you're not going to go up there thinking, well, you know, I'm probably not going to get a hit because of course you're not. Right. So it's, it's kind of the yeah. same mentality there and just being able to deal with failure. I think that if I had to pick the number one thing that that athletes, especially baseball players, have a, an edge over people that have not competed in the sport is, is the ability to process and deal with and move on from failure because it's cliche, but they always say baseball is a game of failure. If you hit 300, you're successful three out of 10 times, and you're literally one of the best players that's ever played in the entire sport. So, um, yeah, it sucks striking out. It sucks letting your team down. It sucks in business when you don't meet specific goals and things don't go your way. Um, but it's not necessarily, you know, the wins that make you. Wins are important, and you need to have wins in order to make it. But you need to be able to weather the storm and you need to be, you need to be able to get up the next day and, and put your best foot forward and, and put yourself in a position to be successful. That's, that's everything. I love it. I think one of the biggest things, you know, like you said, it's like baseball is a game of failure and that's what taught, you know, those are, those are the lessons that you learn is that you cannot, you know, accept the fact that you went up and, and you struck out or it didn't go your way and it's going to be that way forever. You have to pick yourself back up I like the fact that it's somewhat of a kind of it's it's a team it's a team game because the outcome is dependent upon what you do for the whole team. Right. But in a reality, you are competing with yourself, too. And I yeah. think that that's something that I've learned over time is that, you know, when I got the sales job, I was competing with the other salesmen. But in reality, I'm just competing with myself. Right. And so that's the biggest transition that I've had issues with was the fact that, you know, you are I am on a team, but I am by myself and I've learned that if I'm just being better me every single day, then it's, then it's going to be fine. Yeah, exactly. So where do you, where do you see this going with your classes and things like that? And, um, how are you, how is, how's your growth going with that? What do you, what do you look at that? 
Yeah, so I'm, I'm grateful. So I, I launched Financial University almost two years ago now, and it's been growing consistently, primarily based off of my efforts on social media and building relationships and building trust with people and, and helping them understand the point of Financial University and helping me understand you know, my, my mission with it. Really, my mission with, with Financial University as a business is to continue to, to grow it and scale it and eventually make it one of the largest online financial education platforms around for people that are serious about wanting to make an investment in themselves and their in their financial education and take control of their financial futures and get access to the knowledge and resources that they weren't provided in school or didn't grow up in and provide them with the opportunity to be self-sufficient enough to where if they want a financial advisor great they know what to expect from that financial advisor or if they don't want to work with the financial advisor, they know enough, they have enough context and have a plan in place and enough education, of course, to be able to be self-sufficient. And uh, the more that I can do to, to help people understand uh, the why around it, I think the more successful we'll be in, in getting in front of people and helping them make that step, which is a big step, right? Making an investment in yourself and deciding to, to do something that's good for you. But sometimes you have to get outside of your comfort zone to do that. And if you didn't grow up in a financial literate environment, kind of like I didn't, sometimes these things can be a little bit difficult to to make the decision around. Or if you're if you're like myself and you expect yourself to do everything and figure figure everything out on your own, it can be tough to say, you know what, maybe, maybe I should, uh, you know, get some help and and get access to someone that can help me. So. I think a lot of it for us to continue to grow is to continue to pe put other people first and help them understand the why behind it. And as far as my social media goes, the mission from day one with that has just been to provide free value for anyone that, that wants it and to, to impact as many people as possible for free. And you brought up something that I feel like it's important that, that people hear is the fact that you didn't come from a financial literate family. Can you just give us a little snippet into that and why maybe – you took the path that you did after baseball. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a big part of my story because, you know, people see me on social media as this guy that knows a lot about investing, but, uh, you know, my family and I are immigrants to the United States, right? We're from Venezuela and uh, we grew up, I, you know, our family came up below the poverty line, you know, right. to non English speaking parents and a lot of, a lot of adversity growing up. I mean, that I'd say is the biggest part of my story. Forget the, forget the, finance industry forget social media like that is what made me along with baseball I owe my entire life to baseball and baseball is what allowed me to climb out of that environment um, but you know from a young age I learned how important money was and what it was like not to have it and my entire goal in life was to, to play baseball at the highest level that's all I ever wanted and uh, you know I worked my tail off as, as a kid in high school um, you know I put I, I actually had a job uh, at McDonald's as as uh, as I was going to school, just so I could afford to like have a car and put gas in the tank to be able to go to showcases and stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, a lot of struggle, a lot of adversity, and, and those things kind of when you grow up in that environment, they uh, they scar you a little bit. Um, but they also they also teach you that uh, it's important to to not continue to be in that environment. So. Um, when I got to school, I was a JUCO band at first, but uh, once I got to Division One, I, I studied finance because I knew there was good opportunities in the industry uh, after if my if my career did not continue. And secondly, I wanted to just kind of understand, like, you know, how does money actually work and, and what can I do to, if I do decide to have kids one day or just, you know, later on in my life, make sure that, um, you know, it, that doesn't happen again, right? Um, so a lot of, a lot of my... Uh, motivation in life for better or worse comes from just that place of pain a uh, place of difficulty that i had to, to endure but it's also built a lot of character and i want to be who i am today without it so long story short that's that's why i decided to, to study finance um, in, in school yeah and i think it's a i mean obviously people there are there are people who didn't come from that background and you know didn't have that push to make that happen but i feel like it's important for people to understand that you can come from any situation and be successful and build that portfolio and have what you need to have and, and be literate in money. So I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, definitely. So we we're we're running out of time here. I don't, I want to be, you know, I want to be, um, I'm grateful for your time. I know that you have, you have some stuff to get going um, before 
every the end of every episode we do have one last question that i ask people um and again you know before we get to that let's just talk about where we can find you what's the best place to contact you where do we go to get access to what you have going on yeah so i'm i'm mainly most active on instagram you can find me there the millennial money mentor and also on twitter jose underscore t m m m same on tiktok which i'm actually starting to take a little bit more seriously I'm on LinkedIn as well. You can find me there. It's Jose. I think I used my middle name on there. Jose Rafael Hernandez. You should be able to find it. And then I just launched a YouTube channel as well. So just search up uh, the Millennial Money Mentor on there and uh, you can find me on any of those, but primarily most active on, on Instagram. Yeah, and I'll make sure I link those in the show notes because I know when you when you Google Jose R. Hernandez, there are very many of you and it doesn't go directly to you. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. And there's a lot that played baseball too. <laughs> yeah, there was, I remember growing up, there was a Jose Hernandez. I think he's mainly on the Brewers, maybe with the Royals for a little bit. He was a solid player. There's an astronaut named Jose Hernandez too, yeah. which is interesting. So, yeah. Well, Hey, we have one last question that I ask every single guest. The show is called Shaping Success. And I, I named it that based on a um, conversation that I had when I was in high school, when someone told me they're going to be twice as successful as me when they grew up, which I did not make sense to me because success is in the eye of the beholder you create yeah. your own success so the question is is how do you define success what is the shape of your success it's a really good question um and i think that what has helped me with that the most is a quote by a guy named earl nightingale which you may or may not have heard on this podcast but essentially it's the idea that success is the progression a successive progression uh towards a worthy ideal or an actual goal that you have in mind. So basically says that if a person knows what they're trying to, to achieve and they're consistently taking the steps day in and day out to achieve said thing, that person is a success. And I've bought into that because uh, I myself am someone who is extremely competitive and, uh, you know, it's natural for us as human beings to, to look at, uh, what other people have going on in their lives. I look at my buddies in the big leagues and, uh, you know, I look back at my baseball career and I'm like, man, you know, I know I was talented to continue playing, but, you know, I got in my own way like so many athletes do. And that's something that, um, you know, has hung over me a lot, even in the professional industry. And I see people that, uh, you know, are in the industry that didn't start their own thing and the types of success they're having just because they, you know, remain with the firm. And I'm looking at all these different people. And so that's, that's an internal battle I'm always having to, to fight. I'm very grateful for the success I've been able, been able to achieve, but I'm also thinking about, you know, I can be doing much more. I should be doing much more. Our business should be reaching this amount of revenue and I should be providing this amount of money to my parents every month. And like, these are all these things that I'm constantly battling. So I think having that, that kind of almost mantra to go back to and say, do I know what I want to achieve? Yes. Am I doing this things that are within my realm of control every single day to get myself closer to those things? Yes. Because you have to remember that, uh, it's a process, you know, it's, it's human nature to want it ASAP to want it yesterday. And I think that we should push ourselves to make things happen sooner than later. But at the same time, I think that especially on social media, it's, it's very easy to lose that context. You see pictures of people that, uh, are successful materially, but you don't see the 10 years that they spent in the trenches, losing money, developing a skill set, getting rejected, uh, losing businesses, maybe in some cases going bankrupt. You don't see that process. Uh, you know, Joel Embiid is a, is a, is an athlete that I'm not a huge basketball fan, but he's an athlete that I look up to a lot because he's, he's named after the process, right? He's all in about the process. Nick Saban is a guy that I, I listen to his interviews all the time. He's all about the process. And that's the reason why Alabama has achieved what they've been able to achieve, even with the resources and everything. It starts with the culture and it starts with really, really respecting the process. And, you know, even on our financial university programs, we talk about, yes, we want to achieve this wealth. We want to do this thing. But in order for us to have that end goal, there's a series of steps that we have to do. There's a series of milestones that we have to achieve. There's a series of things that we have to, to go through in our journeys, good and bad, in order to have that end thing. And I think that the more that you can it's easier said than done, but the more that you can realize that everything that's happening in your journey up to this point, good or bad, has almost been a requirement. It's also, it's kind of been necessary in order to not only get to where you are right now, but also 
where you want to be in the future. And again, I know that's easier said than done, especially right now if you're in the trenches and you've taken losses and you're like, man, no, why would I want to take that loss? That's, that's not something I wanted. But sometimes uh, there's, there's hidden there's always a, a hidden opportunity in every single bout of adversity. And I, I highly, highly believe that because I've known adv adversities so well my entire life. And every time I look back on it, when I'm past that adversity, I'm not in that emotional state where I'm just, you know, going through it. When I look back, I'm like, man, you know, I'm so glad that I had to, to work uh, a job at McDonald's in high school and have to go to the, the, the restaurant after varsity baseball games and work a couple extra hours at night just so I could have some extra money. Like it sucked when I was 17. It sucked when I was 18, but I appreciate it now when I'm 27, 28, you know, the things in my business, when things haven't gone well, when investments haven't gone well, uh, when working, bringing on specific agencies hasn't gone well, I look back and say, man, yeah, it sucked losing that money or it sucked just losing that time. But now I understand much more what goes into the specific process that we hired that person for. So I think that's a combination of those two things. It's, it's really seeing success as the progressive realization towards a worthy ideal that's meaningful to you that you define. And also uh, just, just understanding that it is a journey and the things that happen throughout that journey one way or another are necessary. And you're not always gonna understand in the moment why they happened. But if you adopt the mentality that uh, there's hidden advantage in all adversity, once you get through it, I think it's going to make a lot more sense. And it's also going to open up uh, the world to you a lot more. Oh, man, I love it. That's gold. I mean, people don't understand that. Like you said, it's it's one of those things where you just see the end and you don't know that it took so much to get there. Yeah. Well, hey, I appreciate you taking the time to share your story. And um, I'm glad that, you know, I, I look forward to seeing what happens with your social media. I know that's kind of one of the ways that we gauge things, but people need to understand that there was a there was a story before the story. So, um, yeah, I agree. And I, and I appreciate you allowing me the opportunity to share my story because, um, you know, it's great that people see me for the finance stuff. Like that's that's what I do on social media. And that's that's outstanding. But uh, there's there's so much that's gone into just getting to where I am today and, and hopefully where I'll be in the future. And um, I think just seeing that gives people some hope, especially if you're like me, and you come from less and, and you you didn't really have all these advantages that some people have. I think it's helpful just to see that, you know, there are things that you can do with your life if if you if you stay consistent, continue to believe in yourself and, and get through the, the tough parts. Yeah. Well, we'll have to, you know, I, this is kind of a short snippet and at some point I hope to have you back on so we can talk a little bit about the mental side of things too, because I know that yeah. you also have a really, um, great story about mental health too, that, you know, Definitely. people need, people need to hear. And I know they can hear it in other places, but I'd love to just kind of chat that up with you. So, sure. All right. Well, thanks for taking the time. I really appreciate it. And, um, I look forward to seeing how things are going. Sounds great. Thanks Wes. All right. Thank you. All right, everyone, that is the end of the show. I hope that you found some great value in what we had going on. Until next time, I challenge you to find the shape of your success.